As a precursor to this video, what I'll say is that it may not be potentially relevant to you. If you're having some problems with geometry and you feel like you need more tools for getting the job done, then this video is probably appropriate. Otherwise, I would suggest that you might skip on to the next one, which will be covering solar shading. So without further ado, in this video, what I'd like to do is talk about some advanced geometry techniques within IES. Now, in the last video, we had a chat about how we can add roofs, and we went through two different methods, one using the auto-generated feature and the other one using intersections. What I'd like to do now is show you that there are other methods, more advanced methods for creating geometries within IES. What I'm going to say, though, off the bat is that these aren't necessarily tools to use in everyday situations. Rather, if you've got a problem, sometimes these can be helpful. At the same time, they can create their own problems from their use. So the first one of these tools that I want to look at is changing the shape of something. So if we have, look, I've created an object here, which is just this floating room. What I can do is that each one of these points has a coordinate. And I can change those coordinates. So if I go into the model and I go to the top tab here where it says model. Sorry, I need to go down one step. First of all, I can use the edit component. And this is going to give me a series of additional tools for the purposes of altering the geometry. So the first tool is the divide space uh, tool. And this can be quite handy for being a little bit more accurate on the slopes. So using the set cutting plane, I can change. And it's very handy to have a grid on at this point. I can snap the coordinates. And what's happening here is this, if you imagine, is going to create a plane, generate cutting plane. So now it's found the cutting plane, and I can divide spaces. And this can be, I actually forgot to cut it here. One moment, let's go do that one more time. Oh, I didn't divide the spaces, never mind. If we wanted to, we could divide that up. Mm, separate spaces, there we go, separate. And we've generated a slope. That's one option. Another option, which I suggest not using or becoming a frequent habit of user because it can be can cause problems, is to use, again, we're gonna to go to edit and we're going to go to edit vertices. Now, edit vertices, what this will do is that we can shift any component, any node that we want. And you'll need to do this in a quite a careful manner because what you can't do within IES is have uh, non-planar surfaces. And what I mean by that is if I load up paint for a trusty diagram. If I have three dots, well, if I have a plane within my cube, if I was to artificially reduce this one down to here, so my new plane looks something like this, I'll reduce this one down as well. This was what was, the black square was one surface, now we have a fold. It's a non-planar surface, so it would end up being two. So we just need to be a little bit careful about that. So what we do here is, you can see the coordinates. If I want to reduce these down, I can put in minus one. Move the vertices, let's drop it down there. And then find that vertices. And there we go, that's altered that geometry. That 
that's all I really wanted to cover. Sometimes these tools can be handy, for instance, if you're using planes within your diet, within your drawings, either for shading purposes or you're looking at very accurately modeling solar shading. Essentially, you're just bringing them into your model to give it a bit of depth to the visualization. So something that can be very useful to orientate people when you're working with these kind of things is to have um, to draw in roads. They don't do anything for the model itself if they're at ground level, clearly. But it can be helpful when you're dealing with people of other professions if they see the things that they can latch on to. So let's add a hard landscape surface. Again, this can also be useful if you're working across multiple levels. So if we combine two things together, say we have a, um, if we have a slope against the side of our building, then what we can do is generate that slope. And that could be helpful for showing how the ground is moving outside your window. Again, helps for visualization purposes if you're having to do that kind of work with non-engineers. And sometimes it can be beneficial in your solar shading analysis if you've got uh, ground obscuring partly some of the openings. I just realized I created these on the upper plane, but well, what we could do is we could go through the process of rectifying that. So we could grab all these, go and do one at a time. Let's say we want to turn this one into the slope and put it on the right plane. Let's go down edit. We can see it's five meters in the air at the moment. Well, six meters in the air. We want that to drop that uh, that down to six, down to the ground. So we'll grab all those, move vertices. Come on, one to six, move vertices. That's at the ground now. And let's create a ramp up the side of our dwelling. So I'm gonna then push this up three. And we want four and three, there we go. Three. And three. And let's delete those because they're not really adding anything at the moment. And we can see that we got a nice ramp. And that's all for this video. In the next video, what we'll be covering is uh, implementing solar shading within our model. Thanks for watching.